Uh, hi everyone. In this video, I will go through an example of drawing the Nyquist plot for the given system and then uh, analyzing the stability of the closed loop system based on the Nyquist plan. So here we we have a system which has as the loop transfer function k times 1 over s squared plus 3s plus 2 and we need to find out the Nyquist plot for the system and uh, and then see what we have in terms of the stability of the closed loop system. As the first step, we usually take k equal to 1, and therefore we will have L of s equal to 1 over s squared plus 3s plus 2, which is also equal to 1 over s plus uh, 2 times s plus 1. Then we start by drawing the location of poles and zeros of the loop transfer function. This system has only two poles at minus 1 and minus 2. And then we need to determine the uh, Nyquist contour for the system. For our example, we will have this contour, including the whole right half plane. And then we need to determine the number of uh, open loop poles of the system inside the contour. And as you can see here, there is nothing yet. So there are no poles of L of S are inside the Nyquist contour. And therefore, we will have p equal to 0. Now we can start to uh, draw the Nyquist plot for the system. We can say that our Nyquist contour is composed of different segments. One segment is here, the first segment. Then we have the second segment here. And then we will have the third segment. For first segment, we have s equal to j omega, where omega goes from 0 till plus infinity. For second segment, we have s equal to r e to j theta, where r goes towards infinity, because we need to cover the whole right half plane. And theta goes from pi over 2 to minus pi over 2 in a clockwise way, or let's say passing through zero. For the last part, for the third segment, we have s equal to j omega as well. However, omega goes from minus infinity to zero. And usually we don't need to care about this, this part because what we will get for the third segment in, in terms of the Nyquist plot will be exactly the mirror of the first segment with respect to the real axis. So let's start with the first segment. We have s equal to j omega. Therefore, L of s, which will be equal to L of j omega, could be written in the form of 1 over, uh, so we have s plus 2, j omega plus 2, times j omega plus 1. Usually, it's better to write L of j omega in the body form, which will lead to 2 times 1 plus j omega over 2 times 1 plus j omega. So for this system, it's not crucial. But in some other systems, it's especially when we have pole or 0 on the right half plane, we need to uh, take L of j omega in the body form, because it will be easier to find the phase of L of j omega for different frequencies. So this is what we have for our uh, loop transfer function. We can write the amplitude of L of j omega, which will be equal to 1 over square root of omega squared plus 4 times square root of 
omega is squared plus one. And in terms of phase, we will have phase of numerator, which is zero minus phase of denominator, inverse tangent of omega over two plus inverse tangent of omega over one. So these are what we have. And indeed, based on these, we can also draw the body plot for the system. We also see that here we have two poles, two, two first order poles, which means that the phase of the system will start from zero and it will go towards minus pi as omega goes towards infinity. Maybe we can draw the amplitude and phase plot for the system, the approximate ones indeed. So amplitude for the system will start from one over two, which will be minus six decibel. Omega, o, omega equal to two and omega equal to one are the corner frequencies. So let's say one and two here. So we will have 40 and mi minus 20 dB and minus 40 dB. dB per decade. In terms of phase, as I already mentioned, the phase will start from zero. Then it will go down and at infinity we phase will arrive at minus pi because we have two poles. All right, now we can uh, start to draw the Nyquist plot for the first segment. So here we have our S plane. When we have omega equal to zero, amplitude of L of J omega will be equal to 0 0.5 or one over two. And phase of L of J omega will be equal to zero, yeah? Because we have minus inverse tangent of omega over two plus inverse tangent of omega. And as omega goes towards zero, this will be equal to zero. So our starting point will be here. 0 0.5. When omega goes towards infinity, we will have amplitude of L of j omega going towards zero. We will have zero. It, you can see it from the body plot. Here we will have minus infinity in terms of decibel, which is equal to zero, uh, real zero. Or you can have a look at the amplitude of L of J omega that we have here, as omega goes towards infinity, from here we will have zero. And uh, in other sense, you can see here that as omega increases, the amplitude starts to decrease. And the phase goes from zero degrees towards minus pi over two, and then towards minus pi, which means that our the uh, Nyquist plot will start to go to towards this minus pi over two degrees, and then at some point it will go towards the origin or zero. We, 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 we need to determine the angle as well. As omega goes towards infinity, phase of L of j omega will be equal to minus inverse tangent of omega over two plus inverse tangent of omega. And since omega goes towards infinity, we will have minus pi over two plus pi over two or minus pi. Therefore, as I already started to draw the Nyquist plot and as we approach omega equal to infinity, we will arrive at the origin with the angle of pi. So from here, and this is the direction of our graph. So this is what we get for the first segment. Uh, so here you can see that 
indeed there is no need to find any intermediate point even though you could try to find the amplitude and phase for omega equal to one or omega equal to two, two and so on and so forth but for this special example there is no need to find any intermediate point so let's see what do we have for the second segment for the second segment if you remember we have uh, r e to j theta where r goes towards infinity so we will have s equal to r e to j theta when r goes towards infinity and theta from pi over 2 to minus pi over 2 so our l of s will be equal to 1 over r e to j theta plus 2 times r e to j theta plus 1 and since r goes towards infinity we can neglect this 2 and 1 here and what we get is equal to 1 over r e to j theta to the power of 2 and we can see that as r goes towards infinity we will end up always with 0 for the segment and that's why the whole second segment will be mapped into the origin so this this point is for segment two and for segment three we already know that it will be the mirror of segment one with respect to the brain axis so it means that we will have our glove completed like this where we start from omega equal to minus infinity and we arrive at omega equal to zero so it's better to determine omega equal to zero here omega equal to plus infinity then omega equal to minus infinity and omega equal to zero in this way now we are done with our Nyquist plot for the system this was a rather simple system where we had only two poles for the system now we need to discuss the stability of the the system of the closed loop system based on what we have here remember that we have started by setting k equal to 1 for k equal to 1 we have obtained this graph now we want to discuss stability based on different values of k and one way to do it is to take the point minus 1 over k and check the number of encirclements around that point so if and we see that here we have different segments on the real axis if we take minus 1 over k from minus infinity until the origin so let's say that if we put minus 1 over k anywhere on this part of the real axis we can see that we have no encirclement around that point so n is equal to 0 we already know that p is equal to 0 and from here since z is equal to m plus p we end up with z equal to 0 z equal to 0 means that there are no uh, closed loop poles on the right half plane or the closed loop system is stable now if we take minus 1 over k between 0 and this point here which is 0 0.5 or 1 over 2 now we have one encirclement around any point here and that en that encirclement is indeed a clockwise one so you can see that around that point we will have one clockwise encirclement as a result n will be equal to 1 since p was equal to 0 we will have z equal to 1 and this means that the closed loop system is unstable with one right half plane pole or with one unstable pole for the last segment if we place minus 1 over k anywhere here which means that if minus 1 over k is between 0 0.5 and plus infinity 
we can see that n is equal to 0 because there are no encirclement around this point. p was equal to 0. And from here, we can say that c is equal to 0. And again, the closed loop system is stable. So we can see that only for one region, the closed loop system is unstable. Minus 1 over k between 0 and 1 over 2. This means that k should be smaller than minus 2. If it's the case, if k is smaller than minus 2, the closed loop system is unstable. Otherwise, the closed loop system is stable. We can easily verify this by referring to the uh, root locus of the system because this is a simple system we can easily draw the root locus we have one pole at minus one one pole at minus two and if i draw the root locus for this system for the positive values of k and negative values of k we will end up with something similar to this so this is for k bigger than 0, and we can see that for k bigger than 0, the system is already always stable. And for k is smaller than 0, this would be our root, root locus. And we can see that for some values of k, the system is stable. However, afterwards, our system becomes unstable. To find out the exact value of k here, we need to apply the amplitude condition amplitude of n over d is equal to amplitude of mi minus 1 over rho which is equal to minus 1 over k in our example amplitude of n over d evaluated at the test point which is the origin is equal to 1 over distance of the poles from the origin 1 times 2 equal to minus 1 over k as a result, k will be equal to plus minus k. And since we are in the negative locus, plus minus 2, k will be equal to minus 2. And from here, we see that if k is smaller than minus 2, there is one right half plane pole for the closed loop system, and the closed loop system is unstable. Otherwise, if k is bigger than minus 2, the closed loop system will be stable. So that's all that we needed to do for this example. We managed to draw the Nyquist plot for the system and uh, discuss the stability of the closed loop system and then verify it by referring to the root locus plot of the system. OK, so I, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and see you next.